Hey there. Uh, tonight we're gonna do a video on how to replace a screen on um, a MacBook Air 11 inch. It's a 1370 model or it's gonna be the same for 1465 the newer generation it's the same thing makes no difference. Basically what happened with this one I guess somebody they closed something inside you can actually see the crack here it's not that bad but the screen is messed up so it needs to be replaced this computer is nasty as shit but anyway uh, doesn't really matter and for all of you who like to eat on your computers uh, drink or whatever don't do that um, or do it you know you make more business for people like me so your choice uh, anyway, this one has no liquid spill, even though I would be surprised, probably if I open it up. Um, I'm going to tell you what you need to do to replace this screen, uh, what the procedure would be, what tools you would need, tape, uh, what part, pretty much everything you need to actually fix this computer. As far as the tools, I use this, this is called a painting knife. This is very handy when it comes to taking off the bezel, you'll see that later. Phillips screwdriver, um, try to use a tiny one, it comes handy. A prior, metal prior or metal spudger, however they call it, you'll need this to lift the screen. A pair of tweezers, these tweezers you will see what you will need them for, it comes in very handy when you need to plug the cable back in some alcohol, don't drink this or drink it and then again you make more business for me a pair of scissors and the double sticky tape uh, this tape that I use is a 3M uh, core series very strong tape, very good tape, very thin and it's see through it's a bitch to take off, if you mess something up you need to take this tape off, it's very hard and then it, you're gonna end up cleaning it and scraping it off so make sure you do it uh, right the first time I use two different uh, types of tape, pretty much one is I think it's 10 millimeters. this is 5 millimeters. Uh, it doesn't really matter, you can use either one of them the main thing is the screen as you can see this is the polarizer, this is not the whole screen assembly like a lot of people try to screw you over into replacing the whole screen assembly it's gonna cost you like three times the price these screen assemblies are not cheap uh, whoever wants to sell you that means that they don't know how to replace this try to find somebody who can replace this because you it will save you a lot of money <clears throat> now uh, these things are very fragile and uh, be very careful uh, when you actually buy one, wherever you find one from, I buy these online from a company that is uh, in Washington State and Vancouver, I will not advertise them, but anyway, look it up online a little bit like a screen for a 1370 or 11 inch MacBook Air and you'll find either them or something on eBay, it doesn't really matter, just get one of these. Now, the price that you will pay for this depends on where you buy it, uh, from who you buy it. Be careful when it comes, make sure that there are no cracks, at least that it looks fine. Now we don't even know if this thing works, so when we plug it in, we'll figure it out. But either way, if it comes cracked, that means, you know, don't even bother. Don't open up your Mac. Uh, hopefully you see everything, hopefully there will be enough light. It's my workstation here and, and the camera dims it up a little bit. Uh, also next to all of that, you will need a heat gun. I use the regular heat gun, uh, this is industrial heat gun, um, two different heats, two different speeds of hand. Now you need to be careful with this thing, this thing can fry the shit out of your computer and it can melt this black rubber trim that you have here, it can melt the inner layers inside the screen, you don't want to mess those up, you mess those up then you might as well buy another screen assembly and replace it or take it to a person who actually tried to charge you an arm and a leg to fix this uh, now for everybody who never actually done any heavy or difficult repair on a computer let alone did any repair of the computer on the on the computer 
don't even try, don't even bother, you're gonna fuck it up. Uh, you mess up the screen, you mess up the back layers, you most likely damage something while you're trying to take it out, or even, you know, hurt yourself, cut yourself, burn yourself or something, because this is a very advanced repair. If you end up buying the part, you don't really want to follow my instructions because you think that it's hard. Find somebody who can do this professionally. Help, ask me, I'll do it. I do this all the time for people who mail stuff to me. Now, um, the main important thing is uh, pretty much prepare everything that you need. After you do that, you'll need to uh, start heating up the computer, the, the, the bezel itself, and start removing the parts. That's when you have to actually be careful. I'll try to explain to you as much as possible and as uh, dummy proof as possible how to do this, but again, it's difficult. If you're not certain on how to do it, don't even try. You'll mess up your computer and then you're going to end up paying much more money. Don't be one of those DIY people who uh, think they can do everything on their own, even though they have no fucking clue what to do or how to use the tools. Now, I'm not talking about anybody, everybody, uh, my head down to every people, every single person who can actually use a screwdriver or follow these simple instructions on how to do this. Now, again, you're doing this on your own uh, risk. If you damage something, don't, don't ask me. Now, first thing you do is heat up this metal bezel. What I do, I use the first heat gun speed. It's on low, and I slowly go up and down the bezel. Usually I heat up the top of the bezel and the side of the bezel. Now, as far as the bezel is concerned, when you actually feel it that it's hot enough for you to not be able to hold the uh, uh, finger on it, that means that it's hot enough for you to be able to remove the bezel by sliding in that uh, painting knife over there. It usually doesn't take longer than like 30 seconds maybe you're heating it up to loosen up the adhesive so that you can get under and you can slide it out. Now the reason why I took this alcohol is because this alcohol makes your life easier. You're gonna dip this knife in the alcohol, alcohol will slide in uh, make kind of lubricate the whole thing and it will slide in so easy that you'll see how easy it's going to go through. Now, just make it a little bit, put it in a little bit in there. You can feel how hot it is and if it feels like that then you're ready to, to slide in the knife. Slide it in like this, go all the way down. Don't force it too, too much. If you see that it's not budging, heat it up a little bit more. You don't want to damage and break the bezel. Mm -hmm. If your bezel ends up being warped and twisted, you'll need to buy another one. It's going to look like shit when you put it back on. Luckily, these bezels are not too expensive. Now, there is one very important rule when you're fixing these computers. Uh, like I say in all my videos, don't make the computer comfortable. Make yourself comfortable. Now, Pretty much what I do, I twist, flip the computer over, I hold it with my hands the way how it's going to be the easiest for me to actually slide this knife inside and go in. Okay, so now I went all the way to the half of it. There is a tricky part. Right here, you have a camera. This little camera board is very easy to damage. It's pretty much touching the bezel. So when you slide in the knife, pick it up a little bit, as you can see, about a millimeter or two, and keep sliding, but li keep it lifted. And you will see what I'm talking about when I take it up. Don't slide it out through all the way through, you will damage that camera, then you end up buying another part. Again, add a little bit more alcohol. Now, when I already get, go through the first two sides, I don't even... Now, you see that? Uh, it's pretty hard sometimes to get it under there, but when I go through the first two sides, I, I don't even heat it up that much because that loosens up the adhesive enough for me to just slide on the side and take it off.
Now again, if it's really, really hard to get the knife under, even with alcohol, um, don't bother, heat it up, it will make your life much easier. Now, like I said, again, flip it the way how you will feel comfortable. Don't leave the computer on the table so it sits straight. Uh, use something under the computer so you don't actually stretch the top of it and position it the way how it's easy for you. The bottom of the bezel has very little adhesive. Right here on the side, all the way down, right here on this side, and a little bit in the middle. So this part is very easy to remove. You don't need to heat up the bottom piece. You can slide it all the way from this side through. And it actually comes up very easily. I'm going to take the bezel off. Don't pull the bezel. If it's still glued on, um, heat it up again. Don't force it. You'll warp it. Uh, when the bezel bends, it's very easy, hard to get it back to the proper position. And you're going to see those dents all over the bezel. Now you see the bezel is pretty straight. We're going to replace this adhesive later. And uh, it's going to sit in there like it was never removed. Uh, first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to clean up the bezel from the old adhesive. Now what you need to do is you still need to heat it up because this adhesive cools down really, really fast and then it just pretty much tightens up and it's very hard to remove again. Basically I do the same thing. I heat it up for about 10-15 seconds and then comes the hard part of scraping it, uh, scraping this shit off. Now sometimes it will come off very easily, sometimes it's going to be very miserable to take this thing off. Depending on this, you know, it might take you 5 minutes, it might take you 55 minutes to take this, this tape off. Just make sure, even if it leaves some residue, that's not that bad, but make sure you take the actual tape off, because you will need to replace it with another one. Now these that you see with these like black stri strips, these are very easy to remove, even without the uh, heating up, because the tape itself is much stronger, but the see-through tape that you see on the sides, that adhesive needs to be heated up and removed all the way. Don't worry that you don't have the same tape with this black spongy thing, because the tape you're going to put on, if you have the tape that I'm using, is going to make your life very easy. And it's going to sit there perfectly. Okay, so let's heat up the rest. Be careful with the heat gun if you never used it before. Keep it away from your fingers. Uh, anything that can go on fire because even when you turn it off the tip is still really hot and it can melt anything that it's close, close to. Don't put it anywhere where you don't want something to be damaged. Now this fucking thing is really annoying. Every single time I do the 11 inch it always takes a while. On the 13 inch for some reason uh, the tape is weaker. It goes off much easier, it even sometimes goes off in one piece when you heat it up and you try to scrape it off. In the 11 inch, on the other hand, it's like they use some different kind of tape, I don't know what it is. Main thing is that it holds the bezel well in so it doesn't fall apart, you're gonna heat this up a little bit more. that I'm using, you can use pretty much anything that makes you feel comfortable with doing this repair, but I would suggest at least getting this painting knife, because this painting knife will save you a lot of trouble when taking the bezel off. The bezel is so easy to damage and so easy to bend that without this knife, it's going to be a nightmare to take it off. 
or anything, you please find something that is very thin and will go under and bend nicely. Don't use razor blades, don't use uh, uh, don't use putty knives, don't don't use those things that that shit is gonna destroy the bezel. Try to find this is very easy to, to find, just go to an art store, uh, store where they have like art supplies and stuff and ask for a a painting knife. I guess they should have something like this. I also buy this online on a website which I do not advertise but anyway I'm sure you'll have you'll have some luck finding it. Again don't even start the repair before you prepare yourself for it so don't say I didn't warn you. Now this repair itself takes about, you see, it gets pretty hot. Don't burn yourself, I've done that too many times, so I'm used to it. Now the, the thing is, uh, with this repair, this repair itself takes about 15 to 20 minutes, depending on how long it takes me to clean this bezel. Uh, don't run, don't race anybody. You don't need to do this repair faster than anybody. I doubt that you can even come close to how fast I can do it. That's not really important. Important is doing it properly. Uh, now, the people who never done this before, spend an hour, whatever, as long as you do it clean and nice. I've done so many of these that they became a routine. This is garbage. Okay, so we're gonna put new tape on there. Since I have two, two different widths, I'm going to put first the thicker tape. Put the tape close to the top of the edge all the way. You don't need to put the tape on this piece that is sticking out. There is no need for that. This is plenty. If you if any tape is sticking out outside of the bezel or around the bezel, just take that off, cut it or fold it when you take off this protective sheet. Okay, this one do not cover the whole thing. Cover up to these little holes that are around the camera. And you can see. Don't cover it completely, cover it just up to there. The light's still in there, but you know, you'll get the point. Now the reason why I left the piece without the tape here is because that's where we're going to put this uh, center tape. If you don't find the thick tape, I mean this one, the, the wider tape, just get this 5mm one that's gonna be enough and you can just you know double it on the sides because I don't want to cover this black piece and I don't want to cover this black tape here there's a there are sensors from the camera under there you don't want to cover that completely because it can affect the light sensor which, will, which is supposed to turn on the light backlight on your camera no oh, sorry on your keyboard when you're in a dark place. So you see how it looks pretty much the bezel is with a tape all around. This is not covered. This area here, don't cover it. You can cover up the sensor, don't cover the camera and also um, like I said use either the white tape around and just this tape here or this tape all around but just double it on the sides so that it holds properly. Okay, we're done with this. Now we're going to take the screen out. This is the hardest part. 
first thing you do there are five screws holding the bracket on the bottom you can see those screws they're covered with small black tape take these screws out remove the tape from them you need to put these screws back in after you clean the bracket up from the old broken screen now I know this video is going to be a little long much longer than what I usually do I'm not going to speed it up edit the video in the way that ah, sorry I forgot to also mention there are two screws holding this little board on the bottom which is called the inverter board uh, take them out as well Also continue taking out these screws with the tape. Like I said, I'm not gonna speed up the video, so just so that you can just you know go through the video quickly if you're even watching this and think that you're gonna grab all the knowledge from it. And I'm not gonna show you as I'm not showing you the repair on a computer that has already been taken apart and the DCF has been removed, and <clears throat> you see me like removing the screen in a second bezel in half a second, putting another screen in split of a second I'm not gonna do that, people who, who make videos like that are bullshitters uh, they make videos for you to I don't know what you're supposed to learn from that video there is a lot of them that do that, I've seen a bunch of videos like that and just ignore those uh, not that I get anything from you watching this video or not I'm pretty much just helping out people who want to try and do this themselves or who are getting raped by somebody who wants to charge them an arm and a leg for this okay the next thing is unplugging two cables one is a backlight cable right here there is a little black tape right over it it's covering the inverter Another cable is the LVDS cable or the screen cable which is right here. Now I'm going to put this a little closer so you can actually see what I'm doing. Basically you need to lift this. There is not much light here so you will not see. You see how that cable is in here. There is a little latch holding the cable in. Unplug, uh, lift that up. Let me see if I can maybe zoom it, maybe it's going to be easier for you to see. Okay, that looks better. Okay, so as you can see there is a little ledge, I remove the ledge and push this cable out. It's not easy, but I don't know, just push it out. And the other one, in on this side, has the metal bracket over it, push that metal bracket off and then slide the whole thing up push it up, that's how you unplug the cable that's pretty much it hope you saw this, if this is not really clear on the video uh, let me know, I'll try to edit it better now you see this cable, this cable is folded the way how it's folded, you need to put it back in do not fold it any different, any way differently there is a small black tape Remove this tape if you can, if not try to fold it somehow so it's not in the way. Some, sometimes it will just rip when you try to take it off. Okay, so now pretty much we unplug that and it's time to take the screen off. In this case I always flip the computer on the back of the lid. And I'm going to focus to a different area. So that you actually see what I'm doing. Okay, so this is very difficult to do. This is the hardest part of the repair. Basically, you need to use 
this tool. Uh, this is going to help you go under the screen from the side and remove it a little by little. Now, the the way how you need to do this is by heating up the side. You can use the low heat of the heat gun on the side, not much, about five up to maybe ten seconds. That's enough. Dig from this side, go under. Go under a couple of millimeters, only a couple of millimeters and start lifting a little by little. Do not lift too much because if you lift too much the polarizer will break and it will make your life even more miserable. Now when you when you separate it you will see the inner sheets which I was talking about at the beginning. I will not lift them and show them uh, show the sheets to you right now because you actually need to see how I'm removing this. As you can see I'm holding this with my hand. It's not really comfortable for me to I'll show you any differently because you need to see kind of the way how I'm lifting the polarizer. I get under a little bit, a little bit, just a couple of millimeters under. Do not grab these inner layers, you don't want to damage them. Again, just a little bit, just a little bit, and that's it. Now we came to the corner this moment we're gonna hold it like this heat up a little more keep slightly lifting while you're heating it up because that will loosen up the adhesive on the corner and you'll be able to go under easier the thing is you don't want to break the corner if you break the corner it's going to be very hard to remove the residue from the polar as you see Again, just now rotate it. Make sure you don't have any crap under the back lid. And again, the same thing. You can put your finger under the polarizer to hold it while you're heating up the screen. I'm going to zoom out so that you can see what I'm doing on the whole thing. Again, as I said, the computer, you're the one who needs to be comfortable, not the computer. Position it any way it feels good and easy for you. Keep doing this until you come to the end of this side of the screen. Now, as soon as you feel that the screen is not lifting easily, Yes, you heard that, that's a crack, that means that you need more heat. If you feel that the screen is not coming off that easily, you need more heat. Because the more you force it, the more it will crack. When it actually cracks, it gets much, much harder to remove it. And you don't want pieces going under the screen and going under these, uh, these sheets. Like I said, until you get to the corner, when you get to the corner, hold it like this, heat the corner up. When you heat the corner up, start, sorry, not the corner, just the side, start lifting the screen a little by little until you go all the way up. That means that the DC loosened up so much that you can actually pull the screen off. And that's pretty much it. If you got this far without completely demolishing these inner parts, congratulations because the hardest part is done. Now, you will not see me removing this black adhesive because I use the same adhesive. This adhesive is pretty strong. After it heats up and cools down, it grabs a hold of whatever you try to glue back on it the same as it was before so don't worry do not take this black tape off you can see the black tape all around now 
Okay, so now we're going to put some of this tape, the thin tape on the sides, so it holds these sheets together. All four corners you're supposed to put this tape. This tape is just wide enough for you to actually hold, uh, uh, not, not getting under the screen so you can see it when it turns the screen on. So you try to get the 5 millimeter tape. This is the perfect width. Okay, so now you can flip the, the computer like this and you can see that the, the, these layers are not coming out because I glued them and you can see only in the corners. All four corners have this. I'm going to go back to where it was before. Give me just one second. You can see all four corners have the adhesive there, it's holding the adhesive just enough for you to actually put the screen in without them falling out. Now don't worry about them, uh, don't touch them, don't even get close to them with your fingers. If you touch them, you mess them up, the fingerprints are going to stay there and you will not be able to clean them up. Now we need to remove this little metal bracket from the bottom of the polarizer. Keep this up. This metal bracket is very important, you need to put it back inside the screen assembly before you actually glue the new screen in. I heat it up a little bit and then I use the exact same knife I used to remove the screen and get under. And just slide through, comes off easily. The old polarizer is junk, we don't need it anymore, just remove the tape that was there. Because we're going to put another tape here. Use the narrow tape also, this 5mm tape is perfect. And you're done with that. Easy enough. Put it back on where these screw holes are, and you're going to start putting these screws back in. It's time to, this pretty much can be considered as closing it up already. The, 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 big, the big headed screw goes on the side and then the smaller one will go inside in the middle. Make sure you don't bend this bracket as well because you need to put that back in. Okay, it's time to put the new polarizer in. Now, as you can see, you know, zoom it up a little bit. This is the very important part. This cable is a backlight cable. This cable is the LVDS cable. This is going to be almost impossible for me to show you how to plug in because I would have to kind of zoom above and I don't have the camera that's going to be hanging off of my head and uh, in there but I will try I'll do my best to actually show you how to plug it in now you can see where you need to plug it in again there is this little black bracket plastic, plastic latch that goes over the backlight cable you're going to plug that in right here the cable, the way how it's folded it needs to go in that's why I need these tweezers and also this cable goes into here now this is very hard to plug in for especially for a person who never did this before what you do is you grab this cable with the tweezers the way how it's folded like I said and you slide it in 
to the connector now if you don't really see this sorry I can't do much about it but you'll have to figure it out you slide it in now there is a small piece of this connector or cable in the back that you can use to like kind of latch onto it and push it in try not to touch the layers on the top because these layers are very important if you touch them you can damage the actual backlight layer when you get this cable in put the latch back on make sure that the cable is in and there are two little stripes on it that they are aligned properly now this other cable I hope you see this what I do is I go with the tweezer behind the cable I fold it right under the connector because it's positioned in a way that it aligns perfectly because of this backlight cable when I do that when it aligns nicely I just push the whole inverter board down the cable snaps in and voila it's as easy as you saw now I know this is not easy this is going to be a pain in the butt part you need to put these two screws back in there's one and I'm gonna zoom out put another one in there on the other side now here comes the part where you actually test and see what you did turn on the computer uh, this battery was empty so let's plug it in first uh, my charger is a little messed up but uh, we'll get it on let it turn on and let it boot up see if you have any dead pixels or anything like that don't glue anything back yet we need to make sure that everything is clean and I'll show you how to actually clean the back layers without touching them and without damaging anything now let's wait for the computer to boot up you see pictures there everything looks perfect shut it down and you can put this back on the keyboard okay so here's the fun part you remove the upper sheet from the level sticky tape everywhere you put it make sure you remove it ah, you got this far it means you did something good it means you're gonna be closing this thing up pretty soon now there might be dust specks on this on this layer you don't want that because when you close it up you're gonna see them it's gonna annoy you especially OCD people will have, will have issue with that and they will see that little speck in there like it's a fucking thorn in their eye so you know you need to clean it I used compressed air for every one of these or a compressor if you have a compressor on low pressure um, be careful with this make sure spray up away from the computer make sure that nothing white is coming out from it because if you flip it white substance from inside that is making the the whole thing pressurized will fly out and damage the screen now spray a little to remove the dust if you haven't touched this like i didn't uh, you will not have any fingerprint scratches or any damage on this if you have touched it try to clean the area but do not clean with any wipes or anything. Now what I just did is I removed the protective sheet from the inside of the polarizer. Uh, you can just dig under with your nail. It's 
a plastic that covers it do not leave this thing inside you will not be able to take it out without breaking it I can but you will not be able to so just to remove this so do not forget to remove this protective sheet every single polarizer that you buy comes with this thing inside be careful with it spray a little more now it's time to put this back in this is a little tricky for you to align it properly put the bottom of the polarizer about a millimeter or about two millimeters above the metal this metal on the bottom of the uh, assembly when you touch it there okay my head is here that means that it's in position perfectly put it in slide on the sides my kid likes this apparently is not on my hand. Yeah, likes to play with it. Okay, let's turn it on. Picture is there. There is no spots, dots, any kind of shit under because I'm careful with it. You remove the same protective sheet from the front. I'm gonna give this to my cat. He wasn't planning to be inside the video. Uh -huh. He fell on his tail. <laughs> okay, uh, don't mind that. So I explain. Everything's perfect, everything seems fine. Uh, it's time to close it up now. Uh, if there is any tape on the side of this metal piece, try to clean it up a little bit, but it's not going to bother you that much when you put in the uh, bezel. It's going to look fine, it's going to be even, so don't really don't, you don't have to really worry about it. And now remove this. Again, if you don't really feel comfortable in doing this after you see the video the first time, however long it took, let's see, it took 42 minutes. This is too long. I do this in like half the time. But I took my time to explain it to you. Again, I don't really care if you're going to go through the whole video or not. I am not getting any money for this from this and I'm just pretty much trying to help you out. Put the bezel back in, position it nicely inside this black rubber trim. Snap it off on top of that. Slide so that this is grabs a hold of it. Don't press too hard, you don't want to break the polarizer. And you're done. That's pretty much.